Hey guys, Nick here. This is the first video in a series of videos introducing you to front-end web development for Web3 Distributed Applications, or dApps. In this video, we're going to take you from the ground floor and start to build up some knowledge in terms of how do we connect to a user's digital wallet in their browser and then perform operations on that digital wallet. So for this video, I don't want to make it too long. I want to try to keep these as short as possible. We're going to probably move pretty quick, but you can always pause and play along. Um, and if you do like this content, please you know, hit that like button, subscribe, and you'll be notified when we post uh, new videos in this series. So here I'm on Stack Starter, and I have a vanilla stack set up here. And if I click Build, it's going to take us to an editor. And this is really designed for us to be able to play along. So I'm going to post some information in the video description on how you can get spun up with an environment here, or if you have a local development environment already good to go, um, more power to you, you can use that. What we're doing here is really just super basic front-end development, you know, just static files, HTML files, some basic JavaScript, and maybe a little CSS sprinkled in there. We're not going to be using any front-end frameworks like React or anything like that. Maybe later on, but right now, let's keep it simple. So here we are, we have a blank, um, a blank project, and what we're going to do in this video, the goal is to basically follow this EIP 1102 standard for connecting wallets to your distributed application. So this, this document here outlines, this is the proposal for the communication protocol between dApps and Ethereum-enabled DOM environments. And in this document, it kind of outlines the how we should approach connecting to a user's wallet. In the past, we, we just had access to the user's wallet if they had something like MetaMask installed, but now we need to ask the user for the permission to be able to read that, which makes sense. So you can see here, this protocol really defines what we're gonna to do today, which, you know, the legacy dApp initialization was basically this. If we have Web3, then we can go. If we don't, then stop. Super simple. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, if we have a provider, then we're going to request account access. If the user approves, then we'll have account access and we'll be able to read the user's address and then make operations or call into the APIs that are exposed to us in that wallet. So we're really going to develop this little flow right here in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have a blank application, nothing going on. I'm going to go ahead and right click, create a new file and say index.html. Boom. Now, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little better. That might be a little bit too much. And I'm going to go ahead and create a blank HTML document here. If I hit control and space here, I should have a little sample template to pre-fill this out. So you're not watching me just type basic HTML. And let's go ahead and put a title in here. We're going to say, hello, web3. And we'll give it a little h1 in the body. Let's say the same thing. Say, hello, web3. OK, now this template assumes a couple of different files here. So it assumes a main.css file and it assumes a main.js file. We're not going to do any CSS stuff in this video. Uh, we'll make it pretty later. But we will be doing some JavaScript stuff. So. What we'll do is we'll just create both of these files so that the, um, the con our console is not complaining that they can't be found. I'm going to right click, go new file, and say main.css. And I'm going to right click, new file, and say main.javascript or js. Okay, I'll close this main CSS. And now, we don't want that there. Now, if we go back to Stack Starter and we hit run, you're going to see we have a super basic website here. It just says, hello, Web3. Now, we do want to open up our console. So we can hit, to do that, in, I'm in Chrome right now. And now to do that, we can hit F, F12. Or we can hit, or we can right click and go to inspect. Okay. Now, once we're there, we can click the console. And now we see our console. Now, one thing I want to outline here is when we have MetaMask installed, which I have available right here, I'm connected to the Gorelli test network and I have some test ether in here. 
When this is installed, it's giving us this nice interface, but it's doing something else for us as developers. It's injecting an object into the browser that we can use to interact with the Ethereum blockchain. So if we go down into the console here and we say window.ethereum, you'll see that this is an object that we can actually use. So we have access to this object and it exposes all these different APIs. Specifically, it's going to expose the ability for us to do exactly this initialization routine. So let's see how that works. So if we go back here, let's go into our main JS file and we're gonna go ahead and let's just develop a basic onload function, um, which we don't really even need, but we'll, we'll put it in here for now. We'll say window.onload function and we'll just do a console.log and say app is loaded. Or let's say let's say D app is loaded, right? So we'll say we don't need this dot. It seems like it's auto completing that. And I'm still using semicolons here, guys. So we'll put semicolons in there. Okay. So now, if we go ahead and see this, we should see D app is loaded in our console. Awesome. So let's continue to move here. So one thing we know we need to do is we need to ask the user for permission. Now. One, I think it's down here in, in some of these um, documentations is one of the best practices here is to enable the user to take some action. We don't want to do it automatically, right? We don't want to go to a website and then all of a sudden the our MetaMask pops up saying, hey, connect your wallet to this site that you know nothing about and don't trust at all. So come on, please hit it. <laughs> That's not going to provide a good trusting experience, right? We want to keep the user in control. So let's go ahead and add a button in our HTML to be able to allow the user to take that action and actually connect their wallet. So I'm gonna say button and we'll say connect wallet. Now that's gonna give us a button here to connect the wallet. Why don't I do this? I'm gonna split my screen here. Um, there we go. I'll split the screen there. Okay. And I'll make it Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. So now we have this little button here, and this should auto reload for us nicely. So let's go ahead and do that. And we need to put an on click hit attribute on this, right? So if we put an on click, and we'll say, we'll call the function enable ETH, right? Now we don't actually have this function defined yet. So if we say connect wallet, it's going to give us an error here saying, hey, it's not defined. So let's go ahead and let's define that function. So let's go to main.js and we're gonna say const enable ETH equals, I'll make this a nice little anonymous function using the arrow notation. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to now call into the MetaMask system using the Ethereum object and it's going to make an RPC call to enable us to connect our wallet, right? So that's going to give us the ability to read the wallet's address. And you can see here, you know, we're, we're going to do this step right here, request account access. Now to do that, we're going to use this call here, ETH request accounts. Now this touches upon this other standard called EIP 1193, which basically defines the standard interface to interact with this object, right? So this is gonna define some of these error codes that we could get back if the user say rejects our request. So this is a pretty valuable standard to, uh, to go through as well. Um, and I'm just looking at these error codes here. So in order to do this, we're gonna go here and we're gonna make this call. Now, this is going to be an asynchronous call and instead of using promises and then statements and things like that, I'm gonna make this an async function. And the async function will enable us to use the async await pattern so that we can, it makes the code a little bit easier to read. Um, so here, we're gonna go ahead and call into the, using the request method, we're gonna call into the ETH request accounts. So this is going to return the account. So what I'm gonna do up at the top, I'm just going to say let accounts, and we're going to just store it there for now. 
And down here, I'm gonna say accounts equal, and we're gonna await on this, and we're gonna say window.ethereum.request, and now the request method here is going to take a, an object. So we're going to make an object literal here. I'm just going to expand this a little bit so we can see this. And the object is going to take a property called a method. And the method we're going to be calling here is ETH request accounts. And what we could do is we can go ahead and now catch an error, right? Which is a good idea to do. Woo. Catch an error. This will be an anonymous function, and you know we should do some error handling here. But for now, what we'll do is we'll just say console.log error.code. Now, in the case there is an error, the error.code would be one of these bad boys here, these status codes, right? So this is it'll follow the standard, or it should follow the standard. Um, and if all goes well, this account object should have our accounts. So let's go ahead and just console.log accounts. Okay, so now if we go back to our application and our dApp is loaded, we're connected to the enable ETH. Now if I go ahead and say connect wallet, boom, the, the, the MetaMask wallet recognizes the call and it says, hey, what do you want to connect? What I'm going to do is I'm not going to connect this just yet. I'm going to cancel this. Boom. Cancel it. Now, look what happened on our console. Error code 4001, which is what we, we uh, wrote out to the console, and the message is user rejected the request, which is exactly what we did. And then you can see here on line 13 of main.js, our accounts is undefined. So we don't have access to any account information here. That kind of stinks. Now, let's go ahead and do the same thing but let's go ahead and connect this account. So I'm gonna say next, connect, connecting, boom. Now look at that, the accounts, the, it's actually an array. So the accounts array is filled out and the first index is the account that we've just connected to this application. So now you can see here when we go to MetaMask, you can see this little dialogue here that says it's connected. So now we are connected to this site. So this site right here, this is the URL, is connected to this application. So that's it, guys. So that's kind of the first step in getting our application connected to a digital wallet in the browser. I'm gonna stop right there in this video, and then in, in the next video, we're gonna probably look at how do we make basic contract calls to be able to get balances of different tokens on the on the blockchain. I'm not gonna really focus too much on styling this stuff that's kind of a different topic um, but you can go you can go to town on styling this with css it's just basic html all right i hope this was valuable if you like this please give this a like give it a subscribe we are part of long island blockchain so we're a community here on long island we would love to see you connected to one of our networking events uh, we're doing them every month every two months or so but you can check out liblockchain.org and um see what we're up to all right, guys. Thanks.